and how are we doing today? My name is Gabe Zoda for your Port Jefferson play-by-play -play. and today we have a pretty good game Port Jefferson against Bayport so the Port Jefferson Royals are now starting the back half of the year already crossed that halfway point yesterday with the game at Mount Sinai but Luke Phillips is going to rip that one he's going to get on board with a single to start off the game here that's a windy overcast day today I'm sorry the screen I know it's his mount sign I'm gonna fix that here shortly score is not four to one it's zero zero run on first base Luke Filippi always great to see some early offense out of the side of the poor Jeff Royals That one's going to be in there for a ball. All right. And that's... Okay, that's going to do it for the scoreboard there. The scoreboard's all situated. Luke Phillips is going to take off towards second. His speed, he's definitely going to be in there safely. It's not even really a question at this point. We've only seen him get gunned once. That was when he tried to steal third base a couple games ago. But other than that, been very solid. It's been great to see him use his speed. Evangelist is going to swing through that one. Once again, a little bit windy. Oh, it's going to be windy in these away games, I guess. It's just the luck of the draw we had. Evangelista are going to swing through that one once again for strike number two. So, now he's in a situation where he has to battle. And he works himself a walk, so now runners on first and second for Tommy Yo's number four. Pitching for the Phantoms today is going to be Stemmler. Last time Port Jefferson saw Bayport Blue Point, we saw Shartner on the mound. Shartner put up a, an amazing performance. Three home runs in that game. First pitch to Tommy Yost. He's going to swing at for strike number one. Once again, Tommy's still looking for that. Kind of spark to get himself back. Luke Filippi could play mind games with the pitcher. Almost kind of left early, but then came back. Got the pitcher to get off the mound. So now Tommy looking for the second pitch coming in here. He's going to swing at that one again. Kind of the same location from Stemmler. So he was working the bottom kind of of the strike zone, getting these... Port Jefferson batters to swing, or at least Tommy Yost right there. It's a big situational spot for Tommy Yost. He's one of the Port Jeff batters that you kind of trust in these situations, as he's going to, you know, get a single, drop it towards the shortstop. Shortstop's able to make the actual double play out of that. So I thought that was going to drop through, but it didn't. Shortstop for the Phantoms, able to make it the double play by himself. So now with two outs, Luke was able to move over to third base. And now it is Daniel Owens' chance to bring him home. Now, Daniel Owens, the only kind of real success we've seen from him this season was when they played Bayport in the second game of the year. Uh, Owens actually... Hit one, he pulled it right over the shortstop's head, which brought on the first run for the Royals in that game. Unfortunately, it was the only run, as now he's down in the count here. Now Owens needs to fight here. The poor Jeff Royals want a chance. He's going to ground that one over to the pitcher, Stemmler, able to little toss it over to first base. 
He's going to end the inning, so poor Jeff, even though they get two runners on early, unfortunately, they roll into that double play, which kind of ends it for them. So now, the Bayport Blue Point Phantoms are going to step on two of the offensive sides. So for them, we're going to see McGowan lead off. Chardner, number two. Clark's going to hit number three. May is going to be four. Olsen, five. Stemler, your pitcher, is going to be number six. Most is going to be seven. Robertson's going to be eighth. And then Costa is going to be in that nine hole. So we'll see after that shutdown first inning by the Phantoms if if pitcher Natty Mullen can repeat that same thing on the opposite side when we come back. Almost ready to go here. Port Jefferson Royals finish up their warm-ups. The defensive look while we have a second for the Royals is going to be just like this. And we'll kind of segment it half and half here between the first batter, McGowan, and, 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 and Shardner. Actually, we'll just go straight to the at-bat here. Matty Mullen, his first pitch he throws today. Bayport's going to square for a bunt. So again with the strategy, last time we saw him, we saw a lot of bunt square-ups on this side. See if they repeat that same kind of approach today. It's definitely an option for them. It was very effective for them last time as the train passes by. That pitch is going to be low in there for a ball. And Bayport, the field is right next to Long Island Railroad, so got a nice little feature from the train. I think we'll see a, we'll hear a couple passing by today. Count's going to be one and one. And that one's going to be hit to center field. Tommy Yost is going to get under it, make the easy catch for the first out. So McGowan got some nice contact, but unable to make that count for anything. So now, Shartner, number seven for Bayport, is going to walk up to the plate. Like I said, last game that the Port Jeff Royals played against them, Shartner with a big day, three home runs. I mean, he's looking to do the exact same today, and he had a couple of those home runs off of the pitcher Luke Filippi, which is which is Port Jeff's biggest challenge on the pitching side of things. And he's gonna ground that one over to Luke Filippi, talking about him, and just like yesterday, gonna make that easy play over towards first to get the second out. So now Natty Mullen looking for the one-two-three inning. First pitch to him is going to be in there for a strike. Second pitch. Oh, it's going to be a ball and make the count now one and one.
That one's going to be in there for a strike. Count's going to be now one and two. Looking to finish this one, two, three inning here. He's going to throw it to Clark, number th third batter. That one's going to get rolled over to Rory. Rory's going to make the throw over to first. And Evangelista is unable to complete the catch on the other side. So an error keeps the inning alive for Bayport. Uh, obviously, it's never something you want to see. Sorry for the wind once again. It's always something I guess we're going to have to deal with in these away games, or any game, really. Not really much in Port Jeff, but here in any of these away games, a lot more wind. First pitch to the fourth batter, May, for Bayport. Inside for ball number one. And we don't see Abby Rolf today. That one's going to be in there for a strike. Abby Rolf not on the field today. I think she might maybe have an AP. Not 100% sure in that situation, but nonetheless, not on the field today. But still going to hope. We're still going to be able to see some production from... Now it's going to be right field. Uh, the most uncommon starter is Kieran Laffey getting his first varsity start today. As May's going to ground that over to Luke Filippi. Luke Filippi's going to touch second base for the easy force out to end the inning. So that's going to do it for the first. No, no outs at all. Or no runs at all for either side. So when the Port Jeff Royals come back up to play, the next three batters we're going to see is James Grunfelder, Natty Mullen, and Rory Rago. So we'll see what they're able to do when we come back. We are back, James Grunfelder. Like I said, up to plate. Definitely want to see some success out of number seven, your catcher for the Royals. Not much so far for him this season. That one's going to be skied foul. That one's going to be out of play into the street. pitch now. It's going to be high upstairs for ball number one. He swings through that one. Strike number two. Unfortunate last inning for the Royals. Got two runners on, but 
unable to bring anything in. Is that one's going to be ripped? Foul. Just foul. Was looking good. That was almost a guaranteed double if that stayed fair, but goes foul. So we're not going to see anything come out of that hit. But Grooney's going to step back into the box. Get ready. He's going to foul that one off. He's staying alive here. Next one. Ooh. Grooney's just going to strike out, swing through that one. So last four at-bats for Grooney. Falling in the way of the strikeout. Maddie Mullinger pitcher now up. First pitch he's going to see is going to be low. Ball one, so he gets ahead on the count to start. He's looking to help himself. Today, obviously on the mound and in the batter's box. Second pitch, she's going to swing through. Strike number one. It's going to even up the count here. Doesn't change the approach too much, though. Oh, next pitch blows right by him once again. For strike number two, quickly falls and that pitch is going to be in there for strike number three. So two strikeouts for Stemler in this inning. Gurney and Mullen now. Rago up at the plate. He's looking to start some offense for the Royals. First pitch he's going to see. It's going to be a ball. Or strike, sorry. Second pitch, strike number two. And in the distance, just a quick update. Abby Rolf walking in to the field, so maybe we're going to be able to see her a little later on in the game. And this, that count's going to be now one and two. And the one-two pitch coming in. That one's going to be grounded over to the second baseman. Second baseman's going to trip, and it's going to get by him. So Rory works himself on first base with two outs now. With Frankie D'Elia up at the plate. First pitch to him upstairs for ball number one. They're gonna try and pick him off and they're get him at first base. They successfully pick him off. We're just gonna end the inning. For the Royals. So even though they started they got one base runner with that. Error. They're unable to do anything with it since he did get picked off. So no runners stranded due to the pickoff. And we move towards the bottom of the second. So far, 0-0 game. Not a lot of offense from both teams. But the most offense we've seen has been from Port Jeff. So that's encouraging to see. But we'll see if Natty Mullen can have another shutdown inning here in the second when we come back.
one's going to be up. First pitch he hits. It's going to be lofted over to Luke Flip before the out. So that's going to be the first out of the inning. So that was a quick out for Natty. It's good to see. Now Stemler's going to step up into the box. See if he can self help himself out here. And maybe a little bit confused. Grooney's going to walk over to his pitcher. Just say some things. Oh. Just he just swiped over the mound, make it more visible for him. Now, with the second pitch coming in. That one's going to be outside. For a ball. Next pitch now, that one's going to be fouled off out of play. No one's going to be able to get that one, so now two strikes. Fouled off. Nice little pitcher versus pitcher battle here in this at bat. Always kind of like to see these. Always fun to see. See which pitcher comes out on top, whether it's the pitcher or the batter. Who is the pitcher? And that one's going to be fouled off towards the third base side. there for ball. This game so far going, you know, decently, decent pace. Obviously not a lot of offense going on as Stemler strikes out. So that's going to be Natty's first strikeout of the day. Gets it against the opposing pitcher, which is always fun. After Stemler struck out Natty in his at-bat, Natty returns the favor. And strikes out Stemler. So the next batter is going to be most for the Phantoms. First pitch he sees going to be grounded over to Joey Ronica. Joey Ronica is going to make the play. Throw it over the first for the out to end the inning. Just like that, the Phantoms go down in order due to a ground out, line out, or due to a line out, a strike out, and then that last ground out, sorry. So still 0 0 game. Phantoms unable to get anybody on base in that half inning. So now, moving to the top of the third, 0-0 zero, zero ball game. Let's see if the Port Jeff Royals can muster up some offense. They're gonna have the bottom of the order. They're gonna have nine and then top. So we'll see what they're able to do in those at-bats, and especially going to be encouraging if Laughing gets on for the top of the order. So we'll see what they can do when we come back. I'm sorry, the first batter is going to be Dalia. He was the last batter up when Rory got picked off. First pitch he's going to see is going to clip the bottom of the strike zone in for strike one. So we're going to see 8 9 and then the top of the order here. Second pitch he's going to see is going to swing at a high one for strike number two. 
Don't want to give these guys any gifts. And last time we saw these two teams play, it was pretty interesting. He's going to foul that one off. Stay alive in this at bat. I guess the last time they did see each other, the game ended 10 to 1. But it didn't really feel like a 10 to 1 game. Obviously, Shartner had those three homers which is a majority of their offense. And then a couple, a couple errors which allowed some other runs to come in as Delia's going to ground that one over to the shortstop. Shortstop fires it into first, and he's going to be out for out number one. Like I said, it, was, it didn't really feel like a 10-1 game, only because... You know, it was pretty close for most of it, other than those little, you know, home runs and that little... Uh, but the other, the entire rest of the game was very close. And first pitch to Laffey's going to see inside for ball number one. Really important for him to get on base, whether it is by a walk or any other way. To give, you, get, give yourself a runner when Luke Filippi flips over the, the lineup here. So now it's going to be two strikes to Laffy after that first ball. Just throwing right to, right by him. Next pitch, he's going to swing through that one. Strike number three. For the second out of the inning. Just like Mount Sinai was able to do yesterday, we're hoping that Port Jeff is able to get a two-out rally here, especially with the top of the order up. Luke Filippi, you know he's going to do something on the offensive end. Really don't expect him to strike out. Do so you expect the ball to get into play here? First pitch to him is going to be in there for a strike. Second pitch now. He's going to ground that one over to the third baseman. And third baseman unable to make the play. Kind of bobbles it in his glove. But with Luke Filippi's speed, it forces him to kind of rush that play. So he's able to get on first base. And just like I said, I mean, it might have been an error that got him on, but you know he's going to do something offensively. They're going to try and pick him off like they did Rago. Unsuccessful in that attempt. Obviously knowing that Fulabi is a threat on the base pass as they throw back at him again. It's the second time now. This time, going to throw the pitch. That was a balk, actually, from the pitcher. Which is going to move Luke Filippi over to second base. And that one was visible from even where I'm sitting. It's a little bit out in the dead ball area of left field today. Kind of hesitated in his glove, kind of started and then stopped. So Luke moving over to second base, in scoring position for Ant Evangelista. First pitch to number 15. He's going to be upstairs. Blue, blue point, a uh, blue port, stressing to his pitcher just to settle down. Next pitch, going to throw it right by him. For strike number one. Now the count's going to be even here. Next pitch coming in. Luke's going to take off for third. And he's going to be in there. Third base with a stolen base. It was a close one. It was a close one for sure, but... He is safe in there. The only run from yesterday's game was when Luke Filippi stole third base. And the throw was kind of mishandled, and Luke Filippi was able to come in on that occasion. But not the case this time, as that one's going to be upstairs. Count two and two now. Two outs, and this could be this could be game breaking. This could be a major turning point for the Royals if they do bring in this run. And not going to be able to do it. He's going to strike out with that pitch. Swings through it for strike number three. T 
to end the top of the third. And this game's moving pretty quickly so far. 0-0 ball game. Poor Jeff. Unable to get in Luke from third base. A situational hitting wasn't there on the side of An Evangelista. But now we go back to Bayport Blue Point side. We're going to see 8-9 and then the top of the order for them. So we'll see how they're able to do on the offensive end. We'll see if Natty Mullen can continue a strong pitching day on the mound. And as that music fades, we are back into action. Robertson up for Bayport. Number 13 for the Phantoms. First pitch, he, he's going to foul off straight to the backstop. And that pitch, second pitch, in there for strike. It's an 0-2 count for Robertson. Natty ahead in this account, uh, in this count, sorry. So you really want to attack these 8-9 batters. Always important. That one's going to be fouled off. Into the backstop, so. Robertson's going to be able to stay alive there. Natty's going to set back on, back on the mound. Get ready to fire once again. And that one's going to be out upstairs for a ball. I think he tried to break off a curveball there. Just didn't break. Stayed up. So unsuccessful in that attempt. Now the next attempt for the out is going to spike that one in the ground. So the count after being 0-2 quickly reverses to 2-2. Two two. Definitely don't want to see him lose the batter here. Next pitch is going to be fouled off again. So Robertson doing a good job of staying alive in this at-bat not allowing Natty to beat him, but on the flip side we're going to see if if Mullen can battle here through the adversity of having this longer at-bat. So Robertson's going to foul one off again. To stay alive And then the next pitch coming in. That one's going to be inside for ball number three. It's now a full count. Really want to see some solid execution here. Tommy actually did a very good job yesterday against Mount Sinai in these situations. In these 3-2 counts. Let's see what Natty's going to be able to do. Gets the ball to contact. Ground over to Joey. Joey's going to make the play over to first for the first out of the inning. Nice play by Joey Aronica to get in front of that ball and throw him out over at first. Next up for the Phantoms going to be Costa, number the number 9 batter. is going to be wearing number 21. First pitch he's going to see. He's going to give a half swing, but it is in there for strike number 1. Solid, solid stuff from Natty Mullen so far in this game. To keep this game deadlocked at 0-0. Second pitch, that one's going to be fouled in the box. So once again, back to an 0-2 count. Saw this last batter. But let's see if this time he can put him away earlier than he had to last time. Last time he had to go to that full count. Let's see if he could end it right here. Next pitch, it's going to be spiked in the dirt. It's a good 0-2 pitch, I guess. Seeing if he could 
Forces swing and miss, but unable to on that attempt. Now he throws again. And this time he's going to be able to get the strike out. Strike number three. For his second strikeout of the game, and with two outs, the top of the order is now up for Bayport. So, Mullen doing a good job of attacking the eight and nine batters. Really what you want to see. And first patch, McGowan's going to lift that one over to left field. is going to be able to make the catch to end the inning. And that'll do it for the third inning. So through three, still have zero runs for both sides. No hits. It's looking very good for fans of Deadlock. No, not a lot of offense. Good pitching baseball. You're seeing exactly what you want in this matchup right here. So when we come back, we're going to go to the top of the fourth. Poor Jeff back with the bats in their hands. With Yost, Owens, and Grunfelder up, we'll see what they're able to do when we come back. Tommy Yo steps into the box, the lonely left-handed batter. First pitch, he's going to foul that one off. See if Tommy can start us up here with some offense. Port Jeff has the only hit in today's game. No hits on the side of Bayport. No walks either from Natty Mullen, but as that one skied up to left field, that one's going to drop into the glove of the left fielder. Almost had a chance, but a good play from the left fielder to get under that ball for the first out. Tommy had some good contact on that one. But nonetheless, he is going to be the victim to the first out, and now Owens up at the plate. First pitch to him is going to be in there for strike number one. Second pitch now. Be a ball. Let's make the count now one and one. Next pitch now. For strike number two. Count's going to be one and two here. See Owens be a little bit more aggressive. He's gotten some pitches to hit. Just hasn't really put him into play. That one's going to be fouled off. So he stays alive. But what we liked from, you know, when he first saw Owens in the, in the start of the season, he was swinging at some good pitches, but ever since then, kind of slowed it down a little bit. As that one's going to be grounded to third, the third baseman. It's a strong throw over to first for that out. So Owens could be out for the second out of the inning. This game moving pretty quickly here. At the top of the fourth inning. Just because we haven't really seen much. Last time Grooney had a couple nice foul balls. They're nice rips, but they were unfortunately foul. See what he's able to do this time. His first pitch is going to foul that one off. So I talked to him before because, you know, after yesterday's game, and I asked, 
what's kind of the difference for you in practice and in games? Because in practice, he looks very solid from the plate, and as he swings over strike number two here, you know, in games, he's just unable to translate that offense. It's crucial for the Royals if they want to have any sort of success. He drops that curveball in there. It's not going to be a strike, but definitely attempted to throw him off with that one. Next pitch, curveball again, but he's going to poke that one into left field. Left fielder able to make that play. Almost drops it, but he makes the play anyway, and that's going to do it for the top of the fourth. No runners, no hits for the Royals. We're going to head to the bottom of the fourth here. We'll see what they're able to do when they come back. First batter here is going to be Shortner, as he looks to be a catalyst of some offense. So we get another train in the background. Nice train passing by. The first pitch to him was a low for ball number one. It's in the second pitch to be inside for ball number two. So Natty, three. Really sharp innings. No hits. No hit baseball through three innings. For Mullen, as that one's going to be grounded, and that's going to be the first hit of the game for Bayport. That one's going to get by Frankie DeLee on a bad hop. So Sharton is going to move over to second with that. It's unfortunate, but he's going to be on second base scoring position. Phantoms now have an early position to get a run across here with St with Clark up at the plate now, number 16. First pitch to him, going to be low for a ball. It's not going to get by Grooney. Good defensive play by him. Last time Clark was up, he was able to get on and reach first base with an error by Evangelista. So obviously do not want to have that again. Next pitch is going to square for the bun and then come back, pull that pitch back and strike number one. Count's going to be two and one now to Clark. And the 2-1 pitch. He's going to square for a bunt. Try and lay it down. It's going to go foul for strike number two now. So the count's going to get back to even, 2-2. Two two. 
So Natty able to bounce back after two quick balls. Fires two quick strikes right after. Still have that runner on second base. Next pitch, she's going to try and throw an off-speed pitch. Clark's able to foul that one off. Still 2-2, two two, the count. Two-two pitch, a little bit upstairs for ball number three. That's gonna fill up the count, three and two. No outs here in the bottom of the fourth. And I jokingly said to uh, to Gurney, the catcher, I said I'm giving Natty three good innings today. I'm giving him three good innings, and then the fourth it's not gonna be so good. And, and I'm hoping I'm wrong. Obviously. It's said it as a little tongue-in-cheek joke, but so far we've seen three solid innings, and now a runner on second base. So I could be proven right here. Hopefully I'm not. Number 16, Clark. Back in the box, ready to Mullins ready as well. And he's going to call, someone's going to call time. So that resets everyone. A really important pitch here for Mullen. He fires. I was going to get him to swing and miss for strike number three. It was a really important strikeout. Able to get it there for the first out of the inning. Mullen's third strikeout of the game. So now that's going to bring up May. Last time he was up, he grounded out. Looking for more of the same here if you're a fan of the poor Jeff Royals. That pitch in there for strike number one. Starting him off with a nice pitch. Now May with the one count. He's going to swing and miss that for strike number two. Kind of tipped that one into the glove. One out here. Man on second base. Shardner with that leadoff single that would turn into a double with the with the fielding error there. Pitch could be thrown. I think time was called. So now we get ready to fire again. Pitch is thrown. That one's going to be outside for a ball. That one was a close one. Does get called the ball, though. Bruni threatens to fire over to second base, but obviously doesn't throw that ball. Trying to get a pretty good lead as he stutters the... Deals. Grooney's now for that ball call. Grooney's going to head to the mound, talk to his pitcher, settle him down here. Had him 0 and 2. Now it counts 2 and 2, 1 out. Bayport also has two errors in this game. Poor Jeff has one. Errors has always kind of been the crutch of the Royals. Pitch is thrown, fouled off. Count stays two and two. Another huge batter. Every batter here in this inning is going to be huge after that leadoff double. As Natty's just got to look back, Sharpner at second base. Especially don't want him getting any sort of lead. Or any sort of potential to score. He's going to throw it back to second again. He's going to be in there safe. Just like all of the previous times. 
get a feature from another train passing by. It's again right by the Long Island Railroad here. I'm just gonna start just gonna throw over the third. And he's out at third base, able to make that tag. Rago is to get Chardner out at second base. So the biggest threat to score for this game so far on the side of the Phantoms just eliminated over at third base with that caught stolen attempt. Really nice play from both sides, both Grooney and Rago to make the throw and then the catch, but May's going to work himself with a walk. So he's going to head over to first. Two outs now. Now with one runner on. Rosen just steps over to Natty, just goes over to the mound, talks to him. Just really is the importance of this batter here, not allowing any runs to come across. You know, don't want to lose his control. He's been very solid so far in this game. So you don't want to see him lose that, so after that walk, just to get him to reset. Rosen's going to go out and talk to him, make sure he's all good. So after a couple ro words from Rosen, he's going to come back and face Olsen. So the last time Olsen was up, he lined out. First pitch to him. Olsen's going to swing and miss at it. Oh, for strike one. So, Matt, you've seen this you know, very good job this game of getting the first pitch strikes. The second pitch, that one's going to be low for ball one. Counts to be one and one, but he's getting ahead on a lot of these counts early. And I've seen him have to battle after that a little bit. Unable to kind of put away these batters, so that's kind of his next step, I guess. That one's going to be drilled through the hole between short and third for a single. So the Bayport batters move station to station. He's going to move over to second. Olsen goes to first. So with two people on, with two outs, you know, these start to almost kind of have to have flashbacks of yesterday when Mount Sinai was able to do the same thing, get two outs, and then able to score a couple runs. Obviously don't want to have that happen again. But it's definitely almost a repeat of history. Once again, it is in the fourth inning once again, so... Very, a lot of parallels from yesterday coming back into play here. Obviously trying to not allow that to happen. As that one's going to be brought over to Rory at third. Foul ball. As Rory made a nice diving play, but the ball was foul, so it's going to be nothing from it. Still nice to see him make that diving effort at third base. Next pitch coming in. That one's going to be lofted foul right into the fans. Catch isn't made by the fans. So no souvenirs today. Count's going to be now 0-2 once again. So we'll see if he's able to put out this batter. And that one's going to be drilled again through the same hole, and that's going to score a run. May comes in with that single from second, so it's going to be the first one of the game. It's going to go in favor of Bayport. Make the score now 1-0 to zero to them, and like I said, just like yesterday, they got two outs in that fourth inning, then a couple runners get on, and then a single happens, and then they lose... Kind of that really nice game that they had, but obviously now a chance to stop that bleeding right here. Shut the door quickly after that run. Number 23 for Bayport now. Up. First pitch to him is going to be way upstairs.
Maddie starting maybe lose a little bit of focus after, you know, what's kind of been going on in this past couple of batters. Which is why you saw Rosen go up previously, but obviously he can't go up again as that one's going to be kind of went right between Rory and Luke. It's going to get past Rory, but Luke able to try and make the play over to first. It's going to be a little bit too late after it got by Rory. So now the bases are going to be loaded. Two outs. It's pretty insane to think that all of this has happened with two outs. So now number 13, up four. The Phantoms. First pitch that one, he's going to hit. It's going to be fouled. Got really in front of that one. Drilled a foul over this third base side. Next pitch now. After that first strike. That one's going to be lofted over towards left field. is going to be tracking the ball. It's going to get by him. So it's going to hit the fence. is going to still bobble the ball a couple times. Throw it in towards the cut. Luke Filippi now with the ball is going to throw it in to home. But that one's going to clear the bases. All those runs come in for Bayport. And just like that, the score drastically changed from what once once was 0-0 zero to zero at the start of this inning. And two-thirds through this inning was 0-0. Zero to zero. Now, bolsters up to 4-0 to zero in favor of Bayport. Which obviously, the worst case scenario, especially after getting those two outs. And it's just putting these batters away. It's been the most challenging thing. Because he's been getting these as next batter is going to fly out toward Luke Filippi to end the inning. It's really a shame that these batters have just, or that Natty's been able to get two strike counts right off the break and then not do anything with them and not being able to put them away. So four runs score. Four runs score for Bayport. And now Port Jeff has the ability to try and start to make a comeback here. Obviously they have a couple of innings to do so as we head into the top of the fifth. So right after this little break here, we'll be back with the top of the fifth. So after that kind of nightmare, nightmare bottom of the fourth inning from Natty Mullen on the mound, now at the top of the fifth, has the ability to start off some offense as he's going to lead off this inning for the Royals. Definitely wanted to see him do so here. And a little bit more talk about that pitching thing. It's, I mean, it's really got to be a focus thing. As you get these better down 0-2, you think you you know you got to get just get the out and move on, but you know. So you lose a little bit of that focus, you lose a little bit of that edge and unable to put him away and then all of a sudden you throw a ball, you try to get him to fish and then you just lose control of the next pitch and all of a sudden because of a situation where you're, you're about to walk somebody as Natty strikes out there. His second strike out of the game. So Stemler are able to 
finish off a batter as Rago's going to lift that one right over the first baseman's head in there for a single. So there is some offense, some life from Port Jeff here in the top of the fifth. Now Owens. Oh, oh Dalia now up at the plate. Hopes continuing this offense of inning. This first pitch he's going to swing at for strike number one. Second pitch coming in to Dalia. It's going to be a little bit high, so it's almost going to be upstairs for a ball. And he's going to try to pick off Rory again. This time he's safe. Last time they picked him off, they were successful. This time he's going to pitch. and See Frankie a little bit ahead of it. Kind of just getting caught with these off-speed pitches. Kind of throwing his bat. Not really staying back and keeping his weight back and kind of driving through it. The next one he's going to swing through again for strike number three. It's going to be the second out of the inning here. With that strikeout. So two strikeouts for Stemler here. And now it's going to bang up Kieran Laffey, the number nine batter for the Royals. First pitch he's going to see is going to be upstairs for ball number one with two outs here. Nobody on. Oh, no, one on. Ivy's going to swing through that one. Kind of has an undercut swing, so it really struggles with those higher, high, high pitches. That pitch is going to be in there for strike number two. Next pitch in now to Laffey. He's going to be in there for strike number three. That'll do it for the top of the fifth. So no runs in for the Royals in that one. We do get one hit from Rory, but he's going to be stranded on base, not able to come in to score. And on when we come back, Natty Mullen's going to look to bounce back after that nightmare of a fourth inning to bounce back in the fifth. We'll see what he's able to do. So to start off the bottom of this inning, it's going to be the top of the order for Bayport. This first pitch is going to fly outside, get past Grooney for ball number one. So you want to see a bounce back here, bounce back inning from Natty. You want to see kind of him returning to that first three innings form, as that one's going to be a bunt attempt, it's going to be fouled off.
this next pitch is going to be now spike that one and seeing a little seeing it in the body language of Mullen he's trying to you know fix things trying to adjust what he's doing he's noticing that maybe something's obviously not right so he's trying to fix it you can see this body language is kind of there and he's keeps trying to adjusting but he, he, you always have to think here that Natty almost needs to stop thinking when he's pitching because you could almost overthink and try to over adjust for what you're doing it could have negative effects like we're seeing here it's very obvious as he's able to throw a strike on that one to get the count to a two strike count now gonna try and get him out here but unable to so McGowan's going to walk there so he's gonna get on first and that's gonna bring up Shartner so he is the one who started it off for the Phantoms in the previous inning now he's able to tack on some more offense on his day in this at bat here first pitch to him is gonna be spiked low they're gonna try and get him out at first Unable to get him out there. So first pitch bounced in there for a ball. Runner still on first with no outs here. Next pitch, that one's also going to be one's also going to be a ball. So counts now two and zero. Oh. And this is what, you know this is what you see from young pitchers a lot. Just with they're going to start off very strong, very talented kid, obviously. Now everyone can see that he's a talented kid. But once, you know, things start to kind of spiral, it's kind of that inability to refocus and and take what's, you know, take what's given to you there. He's, he's just trying to overthink everything. and It's affecting him on the mound as he walks another batter. That's the second walk in a row. That one was in four pitches. Didn't even offer a strike in that one. So now Rosen's going to walk up to the mound. We'll see if he just talks to him or opts to make a pitching change here. Looks like it's just going to be a talk. Just a couple words here. Like I said... Just a classic case of a young pitcher in a varsity game. Like I said, very talented kid, but stuff is going to happen. Just gonna have to, you know, learn from this game. And use it to better his next appearances on the mound. walk off the field now. It's going to be Clark up for Bayport. Number 16. Once again, no outs. Two men on now. It's the situation that we're in. He's going to square for a bunny. He's going to get it down. But it's going to roll foul. So although it was interesting, it's just a strike. He's going to pitch again to Clark. And that one's going to be upstairs for a ball. We are in the bottom of the fifth here. 4 0 score. He's going to square up for another bunt. Gurney's going to get the runner into a run down here. So, pass to. Natty, he's going to finish it off. He had a couple passes there. Started off with Rory. Rory started off with Luke Filippi. Filippi threw it to Rory Rago. And then Rory Rago back to Luke Filippi. And then 
Flippy finished it off, throwing it to Mullen, who tagged him out at third base for that out. So that's going to be the first out of the inning. Get that leadoff runner. Good execution on that rundown play from the Port Jefferson Royals. He's going to now bounce back with a strike right after that rundown. So you hope that kind of that rundown is kind of a uh, a spark plug for momentum. As that one's going to be drilled over towards left field, Filippi oh, gonna get them in there. So Sharton is going to move over to third base on that one. Just a single. A couple more bobbles again from Delia. So this outfield's a little bit weird with the how it's kind of laid out. The ground isn't even in this outfield, so you know that kind of those bobbles are you know obviously you don't want to see them, but there is a justification for them. So it's obviously not the worst thing. Now number eight now steps into the box. Natty throws to him first pitch. It's going to be fouled off towards the third base side here. He's going to try pick off the runner at first. Unable to. First and third situation here with one out in this inning. You know, it also is you know it's a real struggle for pitchers on the poor Jefferson side this year because you almost have to pitch almost perfect in order to get you know a chance at you know winning because the offense really hasn't been that great this year. The offense for the Royals. Struggled a lot, unable to get runners in. And even when they get runners in scoring position, they just can't do much with it. So it forces and puts a lot of pressure on these pitchers. As that one's going to be grounded over to Rago. Rago throws it over to first to get that out. A run's going to score there, though. Chardon is going to come in from third base. So the lead's going to now move up from 4-0 to zero to 5. with Shartner scoring. The runner from second base moved over, I mean from first base moved over to second. Obviously Shartner scored. They got the out at first. So now we're going to have two outs, runner on second base. Number six now up for Bayport. Pitch to him, swing through, blow right by him. So now he's looking to finish off this inning here, not allow any more runs. And unfortunately, hate to say it, but I was right. Natty had three amazing innings, and then after it, not so much. So he gives up four in the fourth. Now one here in the fifth. Hopefully it stays at one. To give the Royals some sort of chance of possibly coming back in this one. Obviously it's going to be tough. Gurney's going to throw that one. He tried to throw behind the runner at second base. Tried to get another run down, but that runner at second was able to get back in there. Count's going to be two and one to number six. Next pitch, strike number two. It's looking on that one. 
That's going to be now even two and two. Two outs, man, on second base. We'll see if he's able to put this batter away with two strikes. Pitch going to be high upstairs. Unable to do it in that attempt. Count's going to be three and two. We've seen this. We've seen this story over and over again this game. Get two strikes on the batter and then throw some balls and get yourself into a 3-2 count. He puts a lot of pressure on himself when he gets counts on this. Counts like this just because you have to make this pitch. Now this 3-2 pitch. Can't throw anything out of the zone, as that one's going to be out of the zone. Number six is going to take his walk, move over to first base. So now with two outs in this inning, we're going to have runners on first and second. And he's going to take a walk around the mound, just get himself reset here. And you're hoping this reset attempt works. Stemmler, number 18, the pitcher, back up to hit. First pitch he's going to hit. It's going to be over to right field. Laffey is going to be able to make that catch for the third out of the inning. So Bayport does strand two runners on that inning. They get a couple of hits. And they bring in a run. So now the score is going to be 5-0 in favor of Bayport. As we head into the top of the sixth inning, and for the Royals, obviously, it's not looking too great, but we do have Kieran Laffey in the top of the order coming up to the plate, so we're definitely going to see some offense from those guys, so we'll see what they're able to do when we come back. So Kieran actually struck out to end the last inning. So Luke Filippi is going to start us off, which might be a little bit better if you're the Royals. Start off with some offense. At least that's the hope. First pitch to him is going to be a ball. Second pitch to him is going to also be a ball. So Luke Filippi now early 2-0 advantage in this at bat. Next pitch he's going to see in there first strike. Count now 2-1. Didn't see a swing there from Filippi. It wasn't his pitch. Not going to swing at it. This one he is going to swing at. Grounded over to the shortstop. Shortstop going to throw it over. And that was a close one. Bang, bang. Umpire calls him out on that one. Very close. Definitely could have went either way on that call. Chose to call him out for the first out of the inning. Next batter is going to be Evangelista. Last time he was up, he did fall victim to the strikeout. Unable to get in Luke from second base. Which would have been a nice run to have. 
There's a couple times that Luke's been in a scoring position. Hasn't been able to come in, though. Just because the offense just hasn't been able to drive him home. And so that one's going to hit him. I'm just going to send him over to first base with that hit by pitch. So he walked in this game. He struck out, but now he gets hit by that pitch. So he's going to be on first base. One out. That's going to bring up Tommy Yost now. Number four. Tommy, obviously they did end up getting the loss. for that game yesterday, but Tommy obviously honestly had a very solid performance. Obviously, he gave up a couple runs in two specific innings, but other than that, very solid outing from him. He's going to ground that one over to the pitcher. Pitcher's going to start the double play, and it's going to successfully complete it. Just going to end the inning. For the Royals, so they strand no runners with the because of the double play. They don't get any hits in the top of the six. Obviously, no runs. So as we move to the bottom of the sixth inning here, score is going to stay five to zero. And at this point, for the Royals, that was kind of your your big opportunity if you wanted to have a chance of coming back. And are obviously now going to have a very tough go at it if they want to have that chance. But we're going to see a new pitcher from the Royals here. Rory Rago is going to step onto the mouth. And when we come back, we're going to see how he performs in the bottom of the sixth inning. As the music fades, we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Like I said, Rago on the mound. Seen him a couple times this year. Be able to see him again. As, you know, getting the younger players some reps here on the mound. After Natty Mullen had, you know, had a pretty decent day. He, Natty's going to head over to third. So when you look over at his day, now moving forward since his day is done, kind of recap on it. You know, when you look back on it, you look back at three no-hit innings. Three no-hit innings. He started the game off with three innings that, you know, looked very dominant from Natty. He looked like he was locked in, had all of his pitches kind of commanded. Not a lot of base runners. He saw a couple due to, like, an error. Uh, but other than that... He was rolling. He was absolutely rolling through uh, these Bayport batters. But then that fourth inning came in. Uh, he got two two outs in that inning. Then he got two strikes on the next batter. So you'd, you'd think that he was about to have four innings that looked amazing. But then it all came crashing down for the Royals as Bayport were able to get a couple runners on. Then 
once they came on with the walks and so forth, the runs started coming in with the you know little singles. But those little singles with runners on turns into easy runs. So all of that leads to four runs that ended up coming in for Bayport. And then in the fifth inning, he stayed in the game and gave up another run. So it looked like he kind of lost his focus, lost whatever you know he was kind of locked into. As that one's going to be ripped over Natty at third base. is going to field it in left field, get it in. So he's going to be on base with a single 23 from Bayport starts it off. I believe that was most. First pitch number 13. He's going to square for a bunt, push that one towards the first baseman. That was kind of a sacrifice, moves the runner over to second base. Successfully done. Kind of push it over to that first base side. Evangelista was able to get the tag out. So we've seen this strategy used many times from Bayport. Kind of this bunting strategy of getting runners on and forcing the pitcher to th th throw strikes. And we've seen him also now use it kind of as a sacrifice. Which is an interesting one. Like I said last time, I've never seen it. Never really seen it before. This many squared up bunts. They had it from the top of their order down through the bottom. And, you know, it seems to be very effective for them. It works. It's really fun to see. So that one's going to get into the outfield. And Number 23, who's on second base, moves over to third. And number 17 of Bayport moves over to first. We're going to have the top of the order up for Bayport. McGowan's going to step into the box here. Let's see if he can continue his day successfully. He's walked. He's had a fly out and a ground out, but... Getting the ball in play, for sure. Making Port Jeff make the outs. There's a chance with a runner on third base to bring in another run here for Bayport and advance this lead here. Ryo throwing, throwing some good stuff. Obviously, the velocity isn't really his strong suit, so that's probably why Bayport's able to get a couple of these knocks in. But you want to see him throw strikes, and he has been throwing strikes so that's something that has been good, but unfortunately, he's thrown two balls here to McGowan to start off the count. So hasn't thrown strikes in this at bat, but throughout this inning, has been solid at doing just that. So we'll see if he's able to bounce back here now with a 2-0 count. The third pitch. That one's going to be in there for a strike, but it's going to be lifted over to left field. And Dalia makes a nice little sliding catch right there to save a run. The run ends up coming in anyway as he tags in from third base. So lead goes from 5-2 now, 6-0 to zero in favor of Bayport. But that really nice catch right there from Frankie D'Elia. Now Shardner up at the plate. Has six, has had some success today. Hit that double. Also has hit a single. He's grounded out as well. So all three of his at bats so far has been getting contact. So now maybe with a more favorable pitcher for him. He's looking to get a pitch that he really likes. And as he's going to nub that one over back to the pitcher, Rory's just going to toss that one over to first base to get the final out of the bottom of the sixth. So 
Bayport does bring in another run in that innings. They strand another couple of batters, and they do get another couple of hits. So, score is now going to be 6-0 as we enter the top of the seventh. Last chance for the Port Jeff Royals to come back in this game. They're going to need a lot to do it, but you never count out anybody, and we'll see what they're able to do when we come back. So Owens is going to start this inning, and actually he hits that first pitch and gets it perfectly in between the shortstop and the left fielder, so it's going to drop in there. Owens gets himself on the first base, encouraging start for the Royals as they attempt to make close to the impossible comeback here, six runs. They've had three hits throughout this game. They're going to need a little bit more than that this inning if they want to perform this as Owen starts it off well with that single so Gruny is going to be up at the plate here one swing of the bat from him and could be looking at a 6-2 to two game which would always be fun second pitch to him is going to be fouled off so he fouls off the first two pitches he sees and makes the count now 0-2 We get one last feature from the train in this game. As that curveball to Gruny, the next pitch that came in, was a ball. So the count's going to be one and two now. Oh, nope. Oh, seemed to have locked him out. Four strike three, sorry. So Gruny's going to fall due to the curveball strikeout. Now that's going to bring Mullen up to bat. First pitch to him was spiked in there for ball number one. So not something you wanted to see. Was that strikeout? Second pitch now to Natty. It's going to swing right through it for strike number one. Next pitch, strike number two. Kind of freezes Natty, hit that outside corner. And that's going to be inside for ball number two. Looks like Bayport's got someone warming up just in case. Port Jeff gets a couple runners on. And also because of that pitch count. As Natty's going to lift that one into left field over the shortstop. So he's going to get on with a single. Daniel Owens is going to move over to second base. So now with one out. Have runners on first and second with Rago up. Last time he was at the plate. He was able to get a single. Obviously hoping for the more of the same here in this at bat. Especially after he gave up a run while he was pitching. I'd love to get an RBI here to kind of even his, his own personal score. As that one's going to be popped up towards the first baseman. First baseman's going to be able to make that catch. For now it's the second out. 
and poor Jeff is down to their final out of the game. And now Abby Rolf's going to be up at the plate for her first at-bat for today. First pitch she's going to see is going to be down and in for ball number one. Next pitch. This one's going to be in there for a strike. Close one. Probably thought it was a little bit low again, but gets called in there for strike number one. This counts could be even now. Next pitch, it'll get called for strike two. Now poor Jeff's down to the final strike of the game. And she's gonna foul that one, tip it into the glove for strike number three. So, the Port Jefferson Royals strand two runners there. Tried to do their best to mark some sort of comeback, unable to. With that being said, that's going to be the end of the game. Poor Jeff falls by a score of 6-0 to zero to Bayport Blue Point here. And uh, we've seen you know a little bit of everything. We saw some dominance from Natty Mullen, and he kind of slipped off in that fourth inning where he gave up four runs. That kind of just marked the spell of bad news for the rest of the game for the Royals. Royals unable to do much offensively. Got four hits in this game. Um, but other than that, unable to bring in any runs. And the next time we'll see poor Jeff will be on Friday, I believe, when they take on Shore and Wayne River. So until then, my name is Gabe Zoda. I've been doing your play-by-play -play for the Port Jeff Rosa. And until next time, I will see you guys later and have a great day.